Hi, this is Tom from ZeroToFinals.com. In this video, I'm going to be going through arterial blood gases. And you can find written notes on this topic at ZeroToFinals.com slash arterial blood gases or in the anaesthetics and ICU section of the Zero to Finals surgery book. So let's jump straight in. Arterial blood gases or ABGs are very commonly used to assess patients with respiratory failure and for monitoring in the intensive care unit. An arterial blood sample is required for analysis and this involves inserting a needle either into the radial or the femoral artery. Arterial lines make it very easy to obtain an arterial blood sample and arterial lines are very common in the intensive care unit. ABGs give useful information about the acid-base balance, the blood gases, for example the oxygen and carbon dioxide in the blood, the bicarbonate, the lactate, the haemoglobin and the electrolytes. Let's go through some basic normal values. The normal values for pH, or the acidity of the blood, are 7.35 to 7.45. The normal values for the PaO2, or the partial pressure of oxygen, which is the oxygen that's dissolved in the blood, are 10.7 to 13.3 kPa. The normal values for PaCO2, or the carbon dioxide in the blood, are 4.7 to 6.0 kPa. The normal values for bicarbonate, or HCO3, are 22 to 28 millimoles per litre. The normal values for the base excess are minus 2 to plus 2. And the normal values for lactate are 0 0.5 to 1 millimole per litre. Let's talk about respiratory failure. The first step when you're analysing an ABG is to determine if the patient is hypoxic. Hypoxia indicates respiratory failure. First look at the PaO2 or the partial pressure of oxygen. This is the amount of oxygen dissolved in the blood. A low PaO2 indicates hypoxia and respiratory failure. You also need to check the FiO2. FiO2 is the fraction of inhaled oxygen. Room air has an FiO2 of 21%, meaning the concentration of oxygen in room air is 21%. Venturi masks can be used to control accurately the FiO2. Other masks only give an approximate FiO2. For example, nasal cannula with a 2 litres per minute oxygen flow rate gives an approximate FiO2 of 28%. A simple face mask with a 5 litre per minute oxygen flow rate gives an approximate FiO2 of 40%. And a face mask with a reservoir or a non rebreather mask with an oxygen flow rate of 10 litres per minute gives an approximate FiO2 of 95%. It's important to distinguish between the types of respiratory failure. A low PaO2 or partial pressure of oxygen indicates hypoxia and respiratory failure. If the patient has a normal PaCO2 or partial pressure of carbon dioxide with a low PaO2 or partial pressure of oxygen, this indicates type 1 respiratory failure. Only one of the PAs are affected with a low PaO2. If the patient has a raised PaCO2 or partial pressure of carbon dioxide with a low PaO2 or partial pressure of oxygen, this indicates type 2 respiratory failure. There are two PAs affected. Next let's talk about acid-base balance. The next step when you're analysing an ABG is to check the acid-base balance. If the pH is under 7.35, this indicates acidosis. If the pH is between 7.35 and 7.45, this is normal. 
and if the pH is above 7.45, this indicates alkalosis. Once you identify an acidosis or an alkalosis, you need to determine whether the cause is respiratory or metabolic. Let's start by talking about a respiratory acidosis. Remember that carbon dioxide, or CO2, makes blood acidotic by breaking down into carbonic acid, or H2CO3. A low pH, or acidosis, with a raised PaCO2, or partial pressure of carbon dioxide, meaning that there's lots of carbon dioxide dissolved in the blood, indicates a respiratory acidosis. This suggests the patient is acutely retaining carbon dioxide and is unable to get rid of the carbon dioxide and this is what's turned their blood acidotic. Let's talk a bit about bicarbonate. Bicarbonate is produced by the kidneys. Bicarbonate acts as a buffer to neutralise the acid in the blood and helps maintain a normal pH. It takes a while for the kidneys to produce bicarbonate. This is a slow process. In an acute episode of respiratory acidosis, the bicarbonate cannot be produced fast enough to compensate for the rising carbon dioxide level. A raised bicarbonate level indicates that the patient is chronically retaining carbon dioxide. Their kidneys have responded by producing additional bicarbonate to balance the chronically raised acidotic carbon dioxide and maintain a normal pH. This is usually seen in patients with chronic obstructive pulmonary disease or COPD. In an acute exacerbation of COPD, the kidneys cannot keep up with the rising level of carbon dioxide, so the patient becomes acidotic despite having a higher than normal level of bicarbonate. Next let's talk about respiratory alkalosis. Respiratory alkalosis occurs when a patient has a raised respiratory rate and blows off too much carbon dioxide. There will be a high pH or an alkalosis and a low PaCO2. A tom tip for you, the most common scenarios where you'll see a respiratory alkalosis in exams are hyperventilation syndrome, for example due to anxiety, and in patients with a pulmonary embolism. The way you can distinguish between hyperventilation syndrome and pulmonary embolism is that patients with a PE will have a low PaO2, or partial pressure of oxygen, and they'll be hypoxic, whereas patients with hyperventilation syndrome will have a high PaO2. Next let's talk about metabolic acidosis. In a metabolic acidosis, there is a low pH and a low bicarbonate. The causes of a metabolic acidosis include a raised lactate or lactic acid. Remember that lactic acid or lactate is released during anaerobic respiration, indicating tissue hypoxia. Raised ketones, typically in diabetic ketoacidosis increased hydrogen ions, which can be due to renal failure, type 1 renal tubular acidosis or rhabdomyolysis, and reduced bicarbonate, which could be due to diarrhea, remember that stools contain bicarbonate, renal failure or type 2 renal tubular acidosis. Finally, let's talk about metabolic alkalosis. In metabolic alkalosis, there is a raised pH, indicating alkalosis, and a raised bicarbonate. Metabolic alkalosis results from the loss of hydrogen ions, or H plus ions. Hydrogen ions can be lost from the gastrointestinal tract due to vomiting. Remember that the stomach produces hydrochloric acid, which can be lost in vomit or from the kidneys, which is usually due to increased activity of aldosterone, which results in increased hydrogen ion excretion. Increased activity of aldosterone can be due to Kohn's syndrome, which is primary hyperaldosteronism, liver cirrhosis, heart failure, loop diuretics, 
and thiazide diuretics. Thank you for watching this video. If you liked the video, left a comment or subscribe to the channel, thank you so much, it really helps. Zero to Finals is not just a YouTube channel, there's also a website with detailed notes, illustrations and questions, an Instagram account where new questions are posted every day to help you test your knowledge, books, flashcards and much more. I also have a personal channel where I share my thoughts and tips on learning medicine and you can find links to everything in the description of this video. See you next time.